Hello everyone and welcome back to Notebook Overload. My name is Lindsay and if you celebrate it, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you will have a wonderful New Year's Eve. We are currently in that sort of weird liminal space between Christmas and New Year's. So I thought it would be the perfect time to film my 2024 setup. Like these three books are going to be my main three things that I'm going to use to write it next year. What a great eloquent way to put that. So we are going to go through my commonplace book and my journal slash planning setup. So without further ado, let's start with my commonplace book. So if you are not quite sure what a commonplace book is, I do have an entire video about it, but basically it's this book where you collect things from different places. So the idea is that you fill it with things that you love, but that aren't exactly your own words. It's more quotes and knowledge and I like to refer to it as an encyclopedia, but personalized to you, or maybe it is what people now use Pinterest for. But in my opinion, in my experience, this is a more intentional way of going about that. So in my old video, you saw this commonplace book. This is a paper blanks notebook that was based on one of Virginia Woolf's actual notebooks. This notebook actually isn't full yet, but I uh, <laughs> lost it for a couple of weeks, almost two months actually, because I forgot this at a family member's house and I did not trust my country's postal service to return this to me safely. So instead of maybe losing this book, I started a new one until I got it back over Christmas. So in 2024, I will actually go ahead and finish this one. I'm on page 64 out of, I believe, 144. These are the last pages that I did in this. Some weird caterpillars that I found online, and this is some Animal Crossing stuff. So I will actually go ahead and finish this in 2024. But in the meantime, I started a new one. This is a gorgeous notebook that I got sent for free. Um, they are not sponsoring this video, and I also don't have a code or anything, but just full disclosure, they did send this to me for free. Um, this is by the brand Tifosi, if I am pronouncing that correctly. And this is a gorgeous purple and gold notebook that they sent me. Um, it has gold foiled edges. I feel like you either love these or you think they're tacky. I personally like them. So it was a win for me. Um, and then the inside is really pretty. And I just started using this as my commonplace book. Uh, actually, maybe I shouldn't be showing you every single page because I am actually planning to do an entire flip through of this one once I get about maybe halfway through or something because I feel like I will have enough to show you. Um, but as you can see, this has really nice thick paper, which I really enjoy. And it actually comes with page numbers, which I also really enjoy because I actually almost always end up numbering my pages because it's very satisfying to me to see uh, how many pages I filled in a notebook. I don't know why, it makes me feel accomplished. And another big difference between these two notebooks is that this one, this one, has dots instead of lines. And I've actually really enjoyed being back in a dot gridded book because I've recently started adding more pictures to my commonplace book. Let me see where I have a good example of that. For example, here I was writing about cryptids um, and I ended up adding some pictures to that, and I really enjoy how that looks. This is another good example where I was writing about the Ouroboros and dragons, and I don't know, these two pages look very satisfying to me, mostly because of these pictures that were added. They look so much more finished, and the reason that I like the look of that more in a dog gridded notebook compared to a lined notebook is that whenever I paste pictures in a lined notebook, I almost feel like it looks a little bit messy, and it kind of highlights that I'm not that good at cutting things straight. I'm really happy to be back in a dog gridded book for my commonplace book and I actually think that I might keep that up 
when I finish these two. So this T. Fossey book is gonna be my commonplace book and after I finish this I will probably go ahead and finish this and that will probably be enough for 2024. Then of course my planning slash journaling setup. Now um, a lot of you guys have probably already seen this one. This is the uh, Hobonichi Cousin Han version. So if you are familiar with the regular Hobonichi Cousin, this one has the exact same inside, um, but it actually has a hardcover outside. I ended up buying a plastic cover on cover for this because this actual cover has a linen-y feel. Before I purchased it, I thought it would be a little bit more leathery feeling but i actually think this will stain really easily and will be really hard to clean if it does get really dirty so that's why i have a cover on cover on it for now and i don't mind the feel of it i was scared it was going to be super sticky but it's not sticky so that's good not yet at least um, and I did an entire setup video where I went through every single section and I wrote some stuff down and I added some stuff to it um, and I made a lot of mistakes, which in a way was really freeing because it made me feel like I couldn't ruin it anymore. You know, when you start a new book, it can be really hard to not feel like... Um, this pressure that you are going to screw it up, you know? Like, oh, I made a mistake, so my entire book is ruined now. I had to do a lot of, like, internal work to get out of that. And once you get out of it, it is incredibly, incredibly freeing. And to me, it makes my notebook so much better because it is so much more um, of a personal artifact of my life when it's imperfect in ways because my life is imperfect and I am imperfect and I am messy in a lot of ways and these mistakes that you make on the page can maybe be these mistakes that you make on the page can in the moment be really annoying because you're trying to make something artsy or you're trying to make something beautiful but then when you open it later it's you know a fun memory as opposed to oh i made this stupid mistake like i never look back at my old journals and look at mistakes i've made as like a failure thing I think they look kind of endearing, but I did end up writing some small things in this. I still actually have to go back um, into my phone and write out all of my appointments that I have coming up that are already like set in stone for next year and also a couple of concerts and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, other than that, this is done. So you might wonder why I have this notebook. So um, if you've seen my video of why I moved out of a bullet journal into a Hobonichi cousin, which I uploaded, I want to say in September. So if you've seen that video, you may have already seen this cover. I actually don't remember if it's in there, but you've definitely seen this book. So this cover is the Aura Estelle Perfect Fit. I want to say it's called the airy cover. Um, it has a scalloped edge and this is the green intrigue color. I love this cover. It's amazing quality. It's wonderfully built. Um, it was sent pretty fast. It came from Canada and came in perfect condition. I can't recommend Aura Stell enough for their covers. This is the B6 size, but I know they also sell um, A5 and maybe even A6 sizes, which um, do fit the Hobonichi Cousin. I don't know if they fit the Han, but I do know they fit the regular Cousin. Um, and these are really, really roomy. So if you like you know, doing a lot of art in your journals. If you like thick journals, uh, these definitely fit. So this is my bullet journal that I used before I moved into my Hobonichi cousin. And it's actually not finished yet, as you can see. Um, it's filled like up to 100-ish pages right now. Um, and what I've been doing in this book is what I call my ugly thoughts journal. <sighs> Bear with me here, but if you are a person like me and you show your journal on the internet, I am an open book, literally and figuratively. I have no issue with showing you 98% of what I write down, but every once in a while, I just want to vent or there are some therapy thoughts or some trauma stuff that I want to work through on my own. And for that, I have this journal. I haven't written in it a lot. I only want to say that I use it once every two or three weeks at most. But when I do, I usually end up writing a couple of pages, which obviously I'm not going to show you because the whole point of it is that this is private. But um, 
I find it very freeing, even though I have no issue showing you my imper imperfect 98% of pages every once in a while. You just want to write stuff down and not have to worry about it being on the internet forever, you know? It's actually something that I talked about with my therapist and that she suggested to me and I have been finding it super helpful. If you are a person that shows your journal on Instagram or on YouTube or on TikTok or whatever and you feel like this would be freeing for you, I cannot recommend it enough. Even if you're just mad and you want to like scratch at a couple of pages, this can be really great. Um, or if you want to try out a sketch before you put it in your actual journal, or if you want to try lettering, you know, having a junk journal, maybe not a junk journal, maybe that's not the right word because I know people use that for junk journaling, which is an actual thing. Um, but having like a try out mess journal, I suppose, is wonderful. It's great. So that's what I've been using this for. And as a plus, I can still use this B6 cover that I have, even though I'm not in a B6 journal anymore, even though I still love the size. Hobonichi, please make the cousin in a B6. I will be forever grateful. <laughs> so I can still use this cover. I can still use this B6 notebook. By the way, this notebook is a Stalogy B6. It does not come with the Tomoe River paper as the Hobonichi cousin does, but it does have almost a similar feel thin paper that is very strong and that holds a lot of ink moisture without bleeding through the next page. It's not as good as Tomoe River paper. I will say that. It's slightly more scratchy, slightly less smooth and slightly less bleed proof. But if you enjoy Tomoe River paper, there is a somewhat large chance that you will enjoy this paper too, even if it's not the same. It's not a dupe, but I feel like People that like the one paper will like the other, if that makes sense. So this is my mess journal, my junk journal, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, and I've really enjoyed it. So those three books are my main books for next year. Now I've been toying with the idea of adding more notebooks, but I like to keep things simple. These really are my main notebooks. And then this one is for whenever I feel like I need it. Um, I have been toying with the idea of adding a practice journal for my guitar practice. I am a beginner at the guitar and uh, I've been practicing acoustic guitar for a long time, but kind of off and on. And the last couple of weeks, I've really been into it again. I've been doing, I've been doing Justin Guitar, which is a, on a website, it's free course of where he teaches you all these lessons to learn yourself guitar. I can't recommend it enough. I feel like Justin Guitar is like the Bob Ross of guitar teachers. He also has an app, which I believe you do have to pay for, but the website is almost completely free. For sure, all the beginner modules and grades are free. So if that's something you're interested in, I can't recommend it enough. But anyway, uh, not to go on entire side ch tangent, but I have been writing all of the modules and my notes in my commonplace book. And I don't love putting it in here because this is a longer project, a longer journey that I'm going through. What ends up happening is I do like two pages of guitar practice, then I do regular commonplace pages, then I do guitar practice. So it kind of gets mixed up. So if I wanted to do that, I would have to, um, you know, have like a hundred pages just for guitar practice in the back or something. And I don't love splitting up my book like that. I like to work from front to back. That's just a personal preference that I have. Um, so I have been toying with the idea of maybe getting a cheap notebook just on the side, specifically for guitar practice. But I actually think that I first want to try and put it in my daily pages on in my Hobonichi Cousin because there's a lot of space in these pages and I can definitely have something on the side with guitar practice especially because I do it daily. I feel like the daily pages would lend themselves really well for that. So for 2024, that's what I'm gonna do for like my hobby, practice my hobby journaling as guitar is a hobby for me. Also, I forgot to mention this when I talked about my commonplace book, but I did make another one of those indexes in the back where you have an alphabetical order. I haven't filled it in yet. Uh, and then you can write, give me an example, like let's say dragons on page six, you go to the D here and you write dragons page six. So you have this, so you have this glossary index 
thing to look back on. On my uh, commonplace book video, I got a ton of comments of people that were like, you can also just make an index like what you do in a bullet journal, which is totally true, by the way. If you like that, you can totally do that. But I prefer this type of index because it's easier for me to glance and find what I'm looking for. Like if I know that I'm looking for dragons, I know that I have to look under D. And if I make one long index list, it is not as easy for me to sift through. So that's why I choose this type of glossary over a single long list. But do what you want. I'm not the arbiter of commonplace books. <laughs> if you prefer the other type of list, just do that. And this is another thing that I added, which is called books recorded. Um, so if I do end up writing something about a book that I read, or if I even end up commonplacing about an entire book, because sometimes I do that, like with A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. I ended up writing something in my commonplace book almost every single chapter. But then for other books, I only write like one chapter or the first 100 pages or something. So um, in this book's recorded page, what I'm planning on doing is write the title and author of the book. And then right here, if I uh, ended up commonplacing about the entire book or just a single chapter, which I can indicate here by just writing page, I don't know, 25 to 35 or something. And it will, will be very easy for me to see what I commonplaced about reading wise, if that makes sense. I might even end up making another list that is about visual media, like movies and documentaries and stuff like that. So this is my setup for 2024. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out my Instagram and yeah, see you guys soon. Bye.